In the previous video of transcription series, we discussed about the five prime capping process. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now in this video, we'll be discussing about the polyadenylation of mRNA, which is also the part of mRNA processing. In this polyadenylation process, we get the cleavage of mRNA first at a specific sequence and then three prime end of mRNA is polyadenylated. Before getting to the actual process, first let's see what are the requirements for polyadenylation process. First, we need CPSF, that's cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factors. This binds to AAU, AAA signal on mRNA molecule. Moreover, there are mainly two CPSF factors, CPSF160 and CPSF73. And it's the CPSF160 factor that binds AAU, AAA signal on mRNA molecule. Whereas the CPSF73 has hydrolase activity and cleaves the mRNA just downstream of AAU, AAA signal, which we are going to see in the later part of the video. Then we have second factor that CSTF cleavage stimulation factor and for the polyadenylation process we have three cleavage stimulation factors with CSTF1, CSTF2 and CSTF3. This CSTF factor binds U or GU rich region on mRNA molecule which is mostly few bases downstream of AAU AAA signal. This CSTF factor stimulates CPSF factor to drive the cleavage process. Then we have the third important enzyme needed for polyadenylation process which is the poly-A polymerase enzyme or you can say polyadenylate polymerase. Poly-A polymerase catalyzes the incorporation of adenine residues into the 3' end of mRNA molecule, thus making poly-A tail of mRNA. This enzyme uses single-stranded RNA molecule as a primer during poly-A tailing. Furthermore, we need PABP enzyme, poly-A binding protein. This protein stimulates the activity of poly-A polymerase enzyme. And also we need XRN2 which is the exoribonuclease. It degrades leftover cleaved mRNA tail and works on 5' to 3' direction on uncapped mRNA stretches. Now let's get to the mechanism. Here in this diagram we have the DNA molecule on which mRNA synthesis has taken place. From this mRNA synthesis we get the mRNA molecule as shown in the diagram. It's having AAU, AAA signal here and U or GU rich region here. To summarize it in a brief manner, the CPSF comes in and binds AAU, AAA signal and then CSTF comes in and binds U or GU rich region as shown in the diagram and we have the cleavage here. But let's see this process in detail by taking the mRNA molecule separately. We see in this animation the CPSF binds the AAU AAA region or signal and in the same way CSTF binds the U or GU rich region as shown in the animation. Now after binding the CSTF it stimulates the CPSF molecule to drive its process and it is by the CPSF 73 molecule which cleaves the mRNA molecule just downstream of AAU AAA signal as shown in the animation. Now we have the 3' end without adenine residues and to add the adenine residues here we have PAP that's poly-A polymerase enzyme but it's aided by PABP. Once PABP binds the polymerase starts catalyzing the incorporation of adenine residues to the 3' end of mRNA thus forming the poly-A tail. The length of poly-A tail fluctuates between 50 to 250 nucleotides long. So this is how the polyadenylation of mRNA is done. But what polyadenylation is for? We know polyadenylation of 3 end occurs just before the mRNA leaves the nucleus. That means polyadenylation aids in the export of mRNA molecule from nucleus to the cytoplasm. Also polyadenylate tail maintains the stability of mRNA molecule. So this is how we get the polyadenylation of mRNA molecule during the process of mRNA processing. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.